Hey party people, it is definitely not, not, not light outside anymore. Uh, it's Majela today, solo by myself. Um, I kind of just wanted to share a little bit of what's kind of been pondering with me with the Holy Spirit. Hopefully you guys can still hear me even with this air on. Um, there is a lot of controversy behind like religion, behind um, spirituality. And the funny thing is, it's all one and the same. Like you all serve the same God. Um, I think some people just don't have as much knowledge about like what God they serve as those like in religious um, environments. And I feel like the reason for that is is like most people in like uh, churches, they kind of like force this opinion on everybody. And like depending on where you are spiritually, that's kind of like where you decide which church you want to go to, um, what you're most comfortable with. I will say this, no matter what church you go to, the church is not the problem. It's more so like, whether you're whole spiritually. Church is more so about the community, but you individually are the church. You make up the church, right? And so the bride of Christ would you consider to be yourself because when we leave, we're alone. And when we um, come in, we're alone, right? So I ho hopefully that kind of cleared it up for somebody I also want to I know that I'm going to make a lot of people mad saying what I'm about to say but I honestly don't care I, I kind of just want to share my testimony so um, over the past few months I've been like up and down and up and down and God has used those experiences for me to kind of show me you know like the basis of what love is so one when I first came to Christ, I had approval seeking really bad. I had really bad pride, really bad anxiety. Um, I had depression. And it's funny, like I, um, I kind of started to have a lot of like doubts about myself and it was affecting my relationship. And so since it's like a two way deal I kind of decided that there were a lot of things that I didn't want for either one of us. And I kind of made the decision to just kind of like give it all to God. Like I got kind of so tired of trying to impress the world. It's tiring. Every day it's tiring. And I feel like everybody kind of boxed themselves up in like this, this, sphere of what you have to be like or what you have to look like in order to fit into a society that doesn't love you or doesn't know how to love you properly it might not even be that they don't love you it could be that they don't love you correctly whether it's in relationships whether it's in family like we can only do so much we can only do what we're taught within our bounds to teach one another right and so as i have progressed spiritually the first thing that I kind of worked on was that people pleasing. Like when God first called me, he kind of set me apart to kind of break away from what everybody else wanted me to do, to do what he was calling me to do. So um, it's so funny because I think a lot of people thought I was crazy or that I was going back into depression, which I could have been, especially like in the first part, it was a little shaky for me because it was like, I was trying to find my stability. I kind of just gave up everything all at once. I was very hard on myself. Like when I say very hard, I mean like I, I was so hard on myself. I was very adamant about what not to do. And then I was pointing the finger at people who were still doing it because it was like, I got peace. Once I stopped doing those things, I did not have the foundation to tell me why I had stopped doing those things. So some of, uh, I was able to like stop smoking, stop drinking, stop cursing for real. And it was like, I would shame people that would do them. Like that's kind of what everybody does in like the little baby stages. You When you like first getting started, you think that you are just this higher power. Like you, you are 
as you were getting introduced to Christ, but you have to humble yourself to be able to help others, right? So after I got out of that, right, God was calling me to do some crazy things, like to warn people about the rapture. He was calling me to stop seeking approval from people, stop doing things to kind of impress people. And it was so hard for me. Like I had to stop gossiping. I had to stop lying. I had, and it was like training the mind to do. People don't realize that like, it is so hard after you've been trained by the people around you and your environment, like bad company corrupts good character. If you're around somebody long enough that doesn't have goals for themselves, you start to feel comfortable enough to get laid back and then kind of go back into that mindset and that behavior that you were in. And then you have to re-unlearn everything they just taught you. And you, I kind of don't even realize until you leave that environment how mentally draining it was for you. Like, even if you were in a relationship and somebody cheated and then eventually like you kept saying, oh, I'm not gonna do it. And then you end up like going out and dressing different and going to see, like it's, it's funny, but it's not. Um, so one of the first things he had me do was he had me start looking into the rapture. When I tell you I freaked out, cause I was like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get any of it, but it's like, that love I was on fire burning with fire my heart was beating outside my chest and I started to realize like that's why you can't be driven by your heart because you're gonna think that you're right all the time that situation wasn't right but he did use it for my good uh when you come to somebody you can't really come to them in a place to where it's like you're kind of hounding them about something or scaring them because then they're gonna think well I should just stay where I'm at. It's no sense of me going into, like some people you could kind of scare into it and then they get into it and figure it out. But a lot of people you cannot. So it took me a minute to understand what God was. And to me, I found out that he is love, peace, sound judgment, sound mind. And he kind of disciplines like a parent. Now, this is what I kind of figured out. He, uh, in Hebrew actually means they and I feel like there are so many opinions about who and what God is and everybody thinks that their one opinion is right and it is that opinion that kind of separates us when we should be forming one coherent thought you know what I mean like you got so many different branches of churches you got those who um, interpret the Bible as is which is probably like the Baptist the Catholic Catholic Church then you have those somewhere in the middle who kind of like read the Bible as like this metaphor about their life and that would mostly fall into like the non-denominational category and then you have those who interpret it from a spiritual standpoint right like how you're getting attacked spiritually which would be Pentecostal and apostolic it took me a minute to kind of learn about those different denominations and what I learned is that none of them are wrong you can be wrong and right at the same time if you don't have those opinions put together, right? So think about it like this. Two people are arguing, right? You have one perspective of the story and then you have the other perspective of the story. Neither one of them are wrong, but they both have their own perspective. And then when you add an intercessor, right? You get the full story. You get it from one perspective, you get it from the other perspective, and then you get it from the person who isn't biased, who isn't gonna go with one side or the other to kind of give you an explanation of what it all means put together, right? And then that's when you kind of work out your differences. And I've come to learn that there's no right or wrong way to follow God. And I'm gonna tell you why. In the Bible, there are so many, so many uh, things contradictory to one another in them that it's like, unless you read it all, you wouldn't even be able to understand who the Father is. You can't just read Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastic, however you say it, and think, oh, this is what the Bible is about because it's not right. That entire chapter talks about how everything is meaningless, which is true. Because it's like you get up every day, you work, and then when you die, you don't even know when you're gonna die. 
somebody else gets your money, right? So life would be meaningless if you didn't have something to look forward to, if you didn't have something to live, you know, like to, to kind of get you over that impasse. And so I kind of really wasn't focused too heavily on like interpreting it. Like at first I was, I was very heavy on the law because that's what people tell you. But they don't give you a foundation to tell you why. And I'm going to tell you why. So this is what I have found, right? In 1 John uh, 4.18, it says, Perfect love casts out all fear. And what I have interpreted that to mean is that God can take away any fear, right? He is the only person that can give us perfect and unconditional love. And it surpasses like all human understanding. See, we can think that we love somebody, but our intentions might not be as pure as we think they are, right? So what God has shown me is I think I'm doing something out of love. I could really be doing it because I expect somebody to do it back for me, right? Unconditional love is doing what is inconvenient. It's doing what is uncomfortable because you know that the end result of it is that somebody is going to learn a lesson from it is that somebody is going to benefit from it in the long run. You're not doing what is comfortable to you or to them, but you're doing what is necessary to give them what they need to succeed. Everybody's version of that is different, but the one version of that that is perfect is his. That's why I say that even though religious people don't know how to use it, they have more knowledge than they know. They just don't know how to put it to use because they don't know what it is for. They know that Jesus loved them. They know that Jesus died on the cross for them. But I think what they fail to realize is that he went against certain laws to perfect faith, right? So yes, the laws were created before his spirit was born to tell people of the right way to uh, seek the Father. Because then he was speaking to specific people, specific disciples who he knew weren't going to um, abandon the faith that he had given them. These were faithful men. and But he knew that their fleshly desires were overtaking them. And so he felt so bad that the father sent down his only son, the only son to represent him, right? He came down in human flesh to sympathize with us and people wrote what they saw. See, sometimes we forget that everybody has their own truth, but these people were seeing him, right? And they wrote exactly what they saw. Who's to say that they were lying? Go and open up the Bible and find out, right? But the funny thing is, the more that you read about him, the more that you read about what he's done, the more that you look at our environment, the more you see evidence that he's been here. You cannot look at the world and say there is not a God. We have nature. We, we breathe air from the trees, from the nature around us. We serve somebody that surpasses our understanding. We live in a realm that was destined for us to have peace, but because of what everybody has inside of them because of what all of us are battling internally and because people set us apart to make us feel less than we feel like we can't come to perfect peace which we can't in our own understanding because it's like we can't teach that we can't teach how to love perfectly but what i have found out is that jesus actually went against the laws to show what perfect law i mean what perfect love was right and so like there's a, a chapter that I had in my phone and it talks about the Sabbath day and it talks about how the Pharisees were talking about how the disciples did something that went against the Sabbath and Jesus was like, okay, so is it better? Because he knew what was going on in their minds. He knew that they were just trying to trap him. They didn't really care about the law. They cared about trapping him so that they could have a reason to shame him, okay? A reason to say that he was a sinner just like they were, okay? And so when he got asked the question, he said, is it better to do good or evil on the Sabbath, right? Because they were getting so caught up in the law that they forgot that the reason that he was, that for the law being is that there could be perfect love, right? He was the epiphany 
of what you wanted love to look like. He went directly against the laws to show that sometimes, you know, if the law goes against what is necessary for you to show love, then forget it. Because the only way to show perfect love was through him, right? And so I'll read this. Um, 1 John 4, 4. Because he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. When we say he that is in the world, we think of the adversary because if there is a God, there is something that is lower than that, that is causing us to um, sin, right? And see, um, it says, but in God and at the same, oh, at the same time, put no confidence in the flesh, right? So our fleshly desires are what kind of drives us. The lust, the hunger, the, the greed is kind of what drives us in society to, to make us determine what love is. Some people associate love with being, oh, I'm going to give you money and that's it. Oh, I'm going to, but they're doing what they're taught. You know, oh, I'm going to give you food after I just whoop you, but they're doing what they're taught, right? And so it's like, we can't rely on our hearts to teach us what love is, but we can rely on the spirit that's inside of us. We know that these desires that we have are immoral. They're not right. They're not pure. And see, some religious teachers get so focused on the law that they forget the only way to even enact the law is for you to show that law yourself, right? You can't tell somebody, oh, don't go out, smoke, drink, be gay. But you do all of the above when you're outside of the church on Sunday, they're going to be looking at you like, well, what God do you serve? If you're going to do things and then tell me that I'm wrong for doing it, like, and I, I've come to find out, right? This is the problem in the church. So quick to point the finger, so quick to tell people don't be homosexual, but you can't tell them why not to be. And you can't tell them what is a morally wrong. And you can't tell them the basis for the law. And you can't tell them, but you want to tell them how to be. The funny thing is, I was actually able, like I prayed and I was actually able to, I don't even want to say convert, but I was actually able to help somebody who was kind of consumed by sin and felt shameful about themselves. And what I've come to find out is we kind of only do what we're taught or what we're born and brought into, right? So somebody that's schizophrenic, right? As a child, you don't know that you're schizophrenic. You're just told that, you know, you're just told that you're different from everybody else. And that that kind of affects the way that you go about life when you know that you're different right guess what i found out i was sitting by myself and i was thinking about perfect love i was thinking about what god was and as i tried to get closer to him i started to realize something He is not what society has made him in to be, right? He's not in this little bitty category. He's not affected by time, space, or anything. He's not a he, he's not a she, he's not anything, but he could be everything if he wanted to be, you know? And I just found it to be so funny because everybody tries to fit him in this box because it's easier to do, but we really can't understand what he is. And it's funny because they talk about him as if he punished it, punishes them like a parent because they try to describe what they see based off of what the world is telling them. And they're not wrong, but they're also not right because they don't see it outside of their own understanding. One thing I will encourage you to do is just get it from your own perspective. Read a Bible. Don't read it how everybody else is telling you to read it. Figure out who he is for you, right? The only way to make it into the kingdom is to be as innocent as, as children. The only way to do that is to be born again. The only way to do that is to believe that Jesus Christ was resurrected and that his spirit can impermeate us, right? 
to where we can act accordingly. We can act in spirit. We can do outside of what our human understanding has taught us to do. I know it kind of seems like I'm beating around the bush, but that's because I, I've i started to have like so many thoughts at once that it's almost like, that's why you have to get your own opinion, right? I can tell you and tell you and tell you it won't do you any good if you can't really understand for yourself. It doesn't matter what church you go to. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter. Like the Bible is just a guide. It's a guide to get you closer to what perfect love is. Use that guide daily. Use it to seek him. And the more you seek answers, the more you'll find them. Do not do what is comfortable to you. Do not listen to what other people are telling you about your spirituality. That doesn't mean don't listen at all. That means know what to take and what not to take, right? Get as much help as you can. But at the same time, don't let it control how you see the Father, right? And then you'll find the answer that you're looking for. I can't give it to you. And I feel like the, it, there's a reason that I'm saying this. There's a reason for everything. If I gave you all the answers, you wouldn't need to look for them. But I am going to go grab something for my family. So I'm going to have to wrap this up real quick. But I hope that this kind of helped you. I know I didn't kind of touch base on a lot of things, but whew, I tried. Um, I love you guys. And I hope you guys have a blessed night. I pray that, you know, God directs your path and that Jesus kind of brings you closer to him so you have a better understanding for yourself. You know, but I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs>